Schrodinger's vector here, photosynthesis is the process whereby light energy is converted into chemical energy. And this is not an unusual phenomenon. Many organisms on Earth use the energy from the sun to power themselves. These types of autotrophs are known as phototrophs, which is not surprising given that they are photosynthetic. Plants, that is the phototrophs you would normally see every day, are green. Well, most are. But why? Why aren't plant leaves black? I mean, wouldn't it be more efficient to absorb all wavelengths of light instead of not green? Probably yes, yet many plants absorb light within the photosynthetically active radiation that's about 400 to 700 nanometers, with the exception of green at about 510. And through selective absorption from pigments, plants appear green. Pigments, photosynthetic pigments, accessory pigments are an answer. For many photosynthetic organisms, chlorophyll A is the primary and most abundant pigment in photosynthesis. Its absorption peaks at around 430 to 662 nanometers in the blue and red regions. The accessory pigments are light absorbing molecules that assist chlorophyll A in the absorption of light. Chlorophyll B is an example. It is similar to chlorophyll A in molecular structure and its absorption peaks at around 453 to 642 nanometers in the blue and more orangey red regions, which is not too far from chlorophyll A. But despite leaves being green, accessory pigments called carotenoids are responsible for various autumn colors. They absorbed light within the blue, green, and violet regions and thus reflect primarily orange, yellow, and red. The color of a carrot is due to a type of carotenoid called carotene, which is also responsible for a variety of other fruit and vegetable colors. During autumn, the chlorophyll A that gives the plant their green color disintegrates, leaving the colorful carotene and anthocyanin pigments. But some of these pigments don't only help the plant gather light, but also protect it from harmful radiation by dissipating excess energy. And this is perhaps a reason why plants can't be black. It would just simply be too much. But what is the efficiency of photosynthesis? Well, as many things do, it depends. It depends on principal factors considered, the way it is calculated, and what you are ultimately looking to calculate. But the energy derived from light to make sugars can approximately be determined. It takes about eight photons to ultimately fix one molecule of CO2 and emit one molecule of dioxygen. If we take a medium wavelength of, say, 600 nanometers, we have 2.07 electrovolts. We raise that up to eight moles, also giving us a mole of CO2, and we divide the energy needed to reduce CO2 to hexose by the light energy absorbed. And we have an approximate photosynthetic efficiency of 30%. Thank you for bearing with me. However, plants don't absorb all wavelengths of light, nor do they capture all light that hits their chloroplast, and along with other factors, make the percentage much, much lower. Some photosynthetic organisms don't produce oxygen. This is known as anoxygenic photosynthesis, and it only ever occurs in certain types of bacteria. These anoxygenic phototrophs don't use water as an electron donor as other photosynthetic organisms do. And instead of producing oxygen, they may produce sulfur. The primary pigment used in anoxygenic photosynthesis is not chlorophyll A, but bacteria chlorophyll, which absorbs light higher in the light spectrum than does chlorophyll A. But not producing oxygen is the norm in all phototrophs. Because photosynthesis is a diurnal process, at night, no oxygen is released. In fact, it is the opposite. Oxygen is absorbed and carbon dioxide is released as a byproduct of cellular respiration, which plants have always been doing, just counteracted by the oxygen produced in the day. If you sleep in a room with plants, don't worry. The amount of CO2 they produce and oxygen they consume is minuscule, but not being afraid wasn't always the case. Hospitals believe that because of this, 
patients would have to compete with oxygen intake of powers that had been given to them, and this, along with more logical concerns, banned bedside flowers. A study conducted in 1977 indicated that CO2 increased by 1.6% over the night, which is negligible. On the basis of plants producing potentially harmful things, it is known that trees contribute to the production of volatile organic compounds, which contribute to photochemical smog. Some people were concerned about this in 1981. Ronald Reagan publicly announced that trees cause more pollution than automobiles do. There is some truth in what he had said, but because cars produce pollutants like nitrogen oxide and trees produce chemicals that bind with it, they make other pollutants. It is not necessarily the trees themselves, but all in all, trees do more good than bad. Photosynthesis definitely is a ubiquitous process, but because it can only happen at night, deciduous trees, given a general and rough approximation, only ever use photosynthesis one-fourth of their entire lives. The other 75% is either dark or winter. Well, hopefully now you know more about photosynthesis. And I do appreciate your attentiveness in watching this video. Thanks.